Mushroom hunting. All right, JDS Labs Element. Pause. That's what's working, not that. It's that right now. The element. Well, when you see it, you're sort of shocked at how big it is. I saw it in Denver. I'm like, what the? That's how big that is. That is big. And obviously, it is now the centerpiece of your desk if you buy one. It doesn't tuck away in the back. You know, you could sort of just, you no, know, this is, this has to be here. Because you could put it under a shelf, then you got to reach under and you can't get to the knob and then you can't reach the back. So it's, once you have one, this is where it's going. Not even keyboards, just element. Now JDS Labs is one of the places that makes the ODAC. They make a couple other uh, portable amplifiers and such. And this is their big debut like monster product that, you know, is specific to them and they designed it and everything. They're very happy with it. And I like it. It's just, you're gonna have this going on. Now what's going on, what it, what it is, is, is a DAC and an amp. It's a USB DAC, USB only, or analog input with line outs, and it has a 16 volt AC input, and then it's got two buttons in the back, power and high-low gain. On the front is just a quarter inch jack, the end. So, by the way, I do not like this quarter inch jack. It, it's like, once you're in there, you're in there, but I don't know, like, like a nice defined metal one would have been probably nicer. We'll go with it. You're probably gonna leave an adapter in there anyway. Most, most headphones terminate in three and a half right now, or you could use wires to swap them out. Look at this flat red one. Now, the DAC does all the magical things of the universe. We'll go over the specs of the DAC. Specifications, not gallery, not features, no oh, yeah, specs. Of course, my color scheme is screwing everything up. There we go. Ba 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 ba. Total harmonic distortion with noise, triple zero nine percent. Noise, 108 decibels. Output impedance is 0 0.1 ohms. Channel imbalance is less than half a decibel. Uh, power, maximum continuous output. And remember, we're gonna go with 32 ohms, which is like everyone's default. So it's 1.1 watts. So it's right about the same as a non-Uber Magni, which means it powers the Mark III's just fine on high gain. Anything else you wanna read from this list? Frequency response is good. It has some. It has frequency response. That's probably a good thing. Let's look at the pictures of it. Dual gain. Blah, 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 blah. $350. That's the important bit. Because the own here, the X1S, is $300. But the headphone out on that is not powerful. It could push the 600s. Anything above 600s. Not 600 ohms, six HD 600s. Anything above, basically everything but Mark III's, the own pushes. And it has line in, and it has coax line, and it has optical in, and it has filters. So this has more power, only USB in. Also has line out, but the line out is switchable, which is good and bad. It's good, it's, it's a good thing. It's weird because there's an option when you order this, it's $20 more. Let me go back to the actual thing. Right here, you get automatic DAC line output, which is what I was doing when I started the video where you see the light, the white. I'm okay with white, like under there. That means that headphones are playing and I'll unpause that. I just went to sleep. Did you go to sleep? You did. What a good sleepy child. So, headphones, and then when you power it off, the power button doesn't power on and off the DAC, it just powers on and off the headphone amplifier, and when the headphone amplifier is off, these line outputs take over. 
And then you could feed another headphone amplifier or powered monitors with a preamp. God, I hope that song doesn't get me pulled. So many Japanese songs. Or in this case, I have the SMSLA2 amplifier here, which is running to these Bouchard S300s, which are Danish speakers. And so. Now this doesn't control any part of what that's doing. Turn this back on. This takes back over. Headphone app is now working. Low gain, high gain. That button in the back is just low gain, high gain. Back to what we're talking about. The weirdness. I had to pull out the manual and understand what was going on. In fact, here's the page. Because there are two options for this. The first one here is automatic DAC line output. So that's when you hit that button and it'll output or don't want to output. The other option, analog in plus auto line out, which you have to specify. And here's what here's their descriptive thing. These RCA inputs are sensing that there are RCAs here. That's why this is playing music and not the computer. Because the computer is playing music and the USB is hooked up and it's set as a default output device. Rage Against the Machine should be playing, but Rage Against the Machine is not playing because these are plugged in. Now if I unplug these, so that's playing Rage Against the Machine and that's not playing Rage Against the Machine, so I unplugged both of them. So by the default, the analog RC inputs on the unit will not take over unless you plug them in and unplug them, which is annoying. Let's tell you that. It's confusing and annoying. Hold on, you wanna to listen to this and you gotta, okay, hold on. As you plug it in, now the left channel's been taken over, and now the right channel's been taken over, and this does nothing. Again, because we're going to speakers. So the other option you get, and I'll try to explain this, because I keep trying to explain it to myself, this section is RCA inputs disconnected. This section is RCA inputs connected. USB input to DAC to headphone amplifier to headphones. And then when you shut off the element, like it is currently with the light down, then it'll send the output to speakers. But this with the RCA inputs connected, it'll output to headphones. And then when you shut it off, it'll output to speak. It's the same goddamn thing. Why are you telling me this? It, oh, it just does the exact same thing regardless of the headphone? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna, I will screenshot this or link directly to this manual in the description of this video and you guys can figure that out. This configuration adds a second set of RCA jacks to the element, allowing you to listen via USB audio or from an external audio player Audio passes to the line output jacks when the element is off and toggles instantly to your headphones when the element is powered on. So I have that. That's the option I have. So maybe I do have that option. Line in plus auto line out. Sure, they're showing it. So this is the upgraded version. This is actually a $20 extra option. I was, my brain, my brain hurts. So if you don't have the $20 extra option, then you just get automatic DAC line output, which is whatever. All right, we're getting all, we're getting along, we're getting along. Sound quality, separation of channels, power handling. Power's there, in high gain, pushes Mark threes, pushes everything on, this, on that table over there, which not a lot of stuff on that table is really demanding, but all the T50, T40, and T20 variants you know are. 600s play fine, X1s play just fine. I gotta say the DAC on this is as good as an ODAC, a straight ODAC, or the backup of the own X1S, which I really do praise this for its DAC. So I praise this for its DAC. So the weird part is just a matter of if you wanted to play, which... So that's that. So now I wanna play my computer. We unplug that. I can pause. 
So now I want to listen to the headphones. Here, I'll try to demo the high low gain. So this goes all the way to there. This is low gain, I believe, and here is high gain. And back to low gain. So yeah, high gain pushes. <sighs> Phone, one sec. Go, push da. Goddamn cat making my phone ring. All right, unplug these for a second. Not here, no, 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 not here, over there. Yeah. She needed a box. See, the phone rang for a reason. So that Chewbacca could visit. Where was I? Sound quality? Uh, as good as, let's say the Panda Stack. As good as the own on light white headphones. I have no issues with this. The form factor, I see, I'm a big fan of the top knob. I like my knobs on top. I do. This is just big. So, I mean, this is my USB cable, so it's bright white with a big Farad choke there. And these are my RCAs with big white connectors on it. So you could probably, well, you could use nothing but a USB and a power, and then you'd just be playing headphones. But when you want to do speakers or powered monitors, you're going to have to figure out a way for this to sit somewhere on your desk and then output to it. That's, that's perfectly fine. Good girl. So yes, I forgot where I was now. Damn it. Damn you phone. So because it has a line in that is sensing, which is a little weird, I wish there was another button. I wish it was a switch or push this or, cause I know you, 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 you have high low gain and you have power. There needs to be like another one that says, okay, now use RCAs or don't use RCAs. Just a, a source switch. It doesn't have that. Not the end of the world. Just as annoying to have to unplug and then replug. Here, let we have audio playing. And it doesn't, like, unplugging this doesn't switch it back over. It senses at the RCA. So plugging this back in, and of course that pause goes, pleno, and it lowered the volume. Yeah, you have to... Take the rocks. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. So yeah, let me... That was probably not a clever man's decision. So yeah, if I had to really mark something down, it's like, mm, it's just front. You can see there's a screw thread in there too, so they could put a, I don't know. This is, this is just the way it ended up because of this design, because like the way the board lined up. Here's the back, you can finally see it. It's very clean. The box, the box, the bottom of the box has the JDS Labs. Whoop, the foot started sliding. Yeah, you can open it up. There's screws under there, but I mean, why would you bother? These are nice jelly feet. I like jelly feet. Um, I was actually trying to use it vertical for a while. That's just weird. That's just weird. I mean, I guess you could plaster it like that against something. It isn't actually as heavy as you think it is. Like I look at this and go, wow, that's gonna be a big piece of steel. It's not. It's got some weight to it, but it feels like like it probably should. You know, this is this is a very thin metal shell with a plastic bottom and a nice knob. I like the knob. I can't deny the knobness of that. What is that? We got a uh, six o'clock off to four o'clock. 
six to four. Is it worth three hundred and fifty dollars? It's got a very good DAC in it. So let's say you bought a DAC. Let's say you bought the ODAC because you wanted a very, the, you know, that's ODAC to me is as good as you ever need to get in a DAC. This Emotiva is as good as most people ever need to get in a DAC. That Sanskrit Pro is as good as you ever need to get a DAC. What's outputting from this JDS Labs is as good as you ever need to get from a DAC. Yes. Go ahead and downvote me on HeadFi, whatever you want to do. Because DACs at some point just do their job well enough that humans can't detect it. Shut that off. So, an ODAC with RCA outputs is like 160 bucks, roughly. So, then it comes down to, is the amplifier in this worth the rest of the money? Uh, yeah. I mean, this here, the, the Sanskrit fa, fa, is $200 on its own. And it can power the Mark III's and power everything. So this can power everything. And it's got a giant knob and not digital buttons. This is a tube, doesn't count. But again, that's over $200. This is the Huron 5, which I didn't pay full price for that. I bid, I bid on that at the Head 5 meet. And that's worth lots. But, you know, the sum total of this is, is a $160 DAC and a $200 headphone amp. Yes. In this package with source switching and high gain. Well, I say source switching, it just means you are unplugging and plugging things in and it'll swap out. Yes, okay? You have to really look at it and go, I want this form factor on my desk. Everything works. It works flawlessly. As far as how it sounds, as far as 32 bit, all of it. It's great. And I like weird form factors. This is the weirdest. So, are we done with this now? Am I done with this now? It is very, very uh, minority report. If it was just bright white and shiny, then I'm sure Apple would sell a ton of them. I do like the little copper. There's a copper band around the bottom. This is very fingerprinty, by the way. If you're at a of Italian descent, you're gonna have to clean this thing constantly. Yes, I like it. Is it worth $350? I'd love it to go on sale, but I still think in the end, if you're looking for you know an exceptional DAC and a headphone ample that'll power anything, here it is in a sandwich, a big sandwich.